Today I will be talking to you about nationalism and the imagination. It was a talk written by um, Jagatri Spivak. Spivak was born in India in 1942, five years before in the independence of India. She is um, a post-colonial theorist, a feminist, a philosopher, and she's um, well known for her essay on post-colonialism, uh, Can the Subaltern Speak? and for her translation of the book by Jack Derrida um, of Grammatology. Her talk has a very conversational tone where she describes um, her memories to then explain the theory. The major topics I will be talking to you about today are nationalism, the subaltern and comparative literatures. So Spivak begins by uh, telling us the mood of the people uh, to give us an overview of an overview of the history of the people with a shared past. Um, this is very important for Spivak because um, she's questioning why has nationalism failed to represent the minority groups such as the peasants, the women and indigenous groups. She remembers famine, hungry people begging for food and people dying in the streets of Calcutta. She also remembers um, songs of resistance. Resistance was penalized um, with incarceration, um, but the people were using their imagination to be able to fall through the cracks of the system by singing these resistance songs in one of the many languages of India and the British um, authorities couldn't understand these languages so the songs were able to fall through their cracks. What is nationalism? In a colonized country, nationalism emerges as a political and intellectual movement in which independent nation states are unified by a national identity. But Spivak is asking, um, how can a country as big as India be unified by a national identity? So she, um, she, she then follows on by telling us that the nationalist message in the home, so in the pri private sphere, was that independence was... Um, was uh, a feeling of great joy and her father and um, his friends including Muslims uh, would sit around and talk about this event but the nationalist message in in the street was um, that Muslims were our enemies they were evil and they had um, racial um, songs playing over loudspeakers for everybody to hear. The stories um, Spivak is telling us about are the stories of people who nationalism has failed to represent in India's um, official history. So what Spivak um, aims to do is to um, rewrite this biased history and include the um, the forgotten history of um, minority groups such as the subaltern. What is subaltern? Um, there are a few definitions for this word, but I will be using um, Spivak's definition, um, which says, subalterns are social groups who are socially, politically, and geographically outside of the hegemonic power structure. What is hegemony? The power of the ruling class to convince other classes that their interests are the interests of all. For example, we can say that the wealthy class has hegemony over the poor because of their ability to use money to influence society and the government. So, so Bolton, it's, it's, like, um, it's like being oppressed. But it's much more than that. It's an extreme form of oppression. 
and the subalterns that um, Spivak is talking about are the Sabbath women whom she worked with and um, when she was a teacher. Spivak uses um, the example of the Sabbath women, um, oral form formula, to explain what she calls inventive equivalence. It's interchangeable. So what is oral formula? Uh, of or relating to poetry in which traditional material is improvised at each performance by using verbal formulas as an aid to memory. The Sabbath women used um, inventive equivalence and their imagination to, um, to bring up pre-colonial names of places uh, and insert them into their songs as they sung. So, um, one, for example, one of the lines that um, they, they used um, was um, King Men of Manham. Now, I know I'm pr pronouncing this wrong, but Manham is a pre-colonial name of a place in India. The oral formula can, can appropriate words from all sorts of places. It's very inventive. So what Spivak is um, showing us here is the imagination and the complexity of the language of these women to be able to um, get pre-colonial names from their memory and insert them into the songs as they sung. Comparative literature is an academic field where people study literature across national borders across time periods, across languages, across boundaries between literature. It is the literature with their borders. The women are singing the songs in their own language, but they are able to cross these imaginary borders between um, areas and states, and they, um, and the, they cross the borders of time by going um, back into the memory and remembering um, these, these um, pre-colonial names. Spivak is proposing to have a multilingual comparative literature um, and to include the languages of um, the countries that belong to the Commonwealth into the curriculum when people study comparative literatures. I just want to finish off by saying that um, Spivak has been heavily criticized for her complex style of writing and people who um, read Spivak for the first time, like me, can find her language very complex and her style difficult to understand and and what is even more difficult to understand for me is that um, this way of writing is so complex for the subaltern people that she's she's um, that she talks about in her writing that they will never have a chance to begin to imagine um, what she writes about.